Hello, my name is Mark, and welcome to I'm Organic Gardening, located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey. And today we're going to talk about alfalfa meal and alfalfa pellets. And later on in the video, we're going to see if there's any biology that's in this box already. When we're talking about fungi and bacteria and a couple other things that might be in there. And we're going to look and see if we can find that with our microscope. So let's get into it. So what is alfalfa? Here we have a standard definition from Wikipedia. Alfalfa belongs to the legume family, you can see here. And that's very important because what that does, that makes the proteins through bringing up nitrogen from the soil. And how does that plant do that? It grows nodules on the root system and that nodules grow because it contains rhizobium bacteria and it takes nitrogen out of the ground, which will store in those nodules until it's all set and then we'll bring it up to the plant when it's flowering and then change that nitrogen into proteins that's good for our animals on the farm. Here's a picture of an alfalfa root and here's some green leaves up on top from the plant also too. Now here on the alfalfa roots, you can see all these little white bumps. It almost looks like perlite, but that's where the rhizobium bacteria has infected the root and is growing these nodules. And that is also processing and also making a plant available nitrogen to that plant and also to other plants in the ground. That's why it's also a great cover crop. But in this process that we're going to be using this as a fertilizer, those nodules are taking in, again, all that available nitrogen that's in the ground and sending it up to the leaves. And that's what we have right now inside that alfalfa meal and alfalfa pellets. So let's take a closer look at what the alfalfa meal looks like and also the pellets look like. I'm gonna weigh out the same amount and put them in these two bowls here so you can see it. I have a scale here and then later on I'll add some distilled water to that. Everything's clean and I'm gonna let it sit for 24 hours and then we'll look underneath the microscope. I just want a good comparison. It's not a scientific experiment by any means, but I wanna be kinda of as close as possible to providing the uh, good information to you. Here's a great example of both products, the same weight in each bowl. And now we have our alfalfa meal here on your left hand side. And on the right hand side, we have our pellets. And you can definitely see the difference between the two. You can see how fine it's been ground down, this alfalfa meal. Not too bad, very lightweight, very powdery. And now our alfalfa pellets, let's get that in the view here, nice dark green. Now they compress these, they first soak them in water and then they'll compress them through an extruder and it's almost like making a pasta, same kind of process, process in a way. And what you're looking at here is a guaranteed analysis of that alfalfa meal. Now, I also want to bring this up. When people grow alfalfa in different places all over this world or especially here in the United States, there is a different quality measure of alfalfa. Not all alfalfa is the same. And they'll test uh, that alfalfa and rate the, the cost of it or the wholesale price of it when it's sold to the farmer to other people. Now that analysis is made based on how much protein is in there or how much nitrogen is in there. And that is the basis of, let's say, guaranteeing that alfalfa product being a very healthy and rich product full of nutrients for farm animals or any type of thing that you want to do with it. Now, when you buy alfalfa pellets, you don't know the quality that's in there. That's why there's a price difference and that's very important to understand. It's not, it's still alfalfa and it still has proteins in it, but we don't know how much. There's usually not a, a guaranteed analysis of that. Plus another thing, when you buy alfalfa pellets, there might be actually a grass in there. Now, alfalfa is not a grass, it's a legume, but there might be Timothy grass mixed in there or some other type of grass that was mixed in growing with the alfalfa to give it bulk. Here we are just a couple of hours later after I hydrated both bowls. Now this is our alfalfa meal and this is our alfalfa pellets. Now. With rehydrating that, those bacteria and fungi that has been dormant 
on that material for the lifetime since it's been in the box will rehydrate again and then start coming back to being alive again. So now we're going to take just a small sample and we don't want to get too much organic matter so we can see if there's any bacteria growing and that's the good bacteria that was on the plant uh, creating the plant's immune system covering the leaves and also the fungi covering the leaves. What I mean is that let's say there's rose petal here. When something is growing, whether it's green or a flower, it is covered with bacteria and fungi in nature as a barrier against diseases. And what we'll do is we'll cover each of the stem, the flower, the leaves, like your tomato plants, and I mentioned in other videos too, that that bacteria and fungi will grow on the surface of that plant and again, be a barrier between the plant's actual uh, own defense system on the inside and also between nature on the outside. So again, it's just a nice little wall barrier of bacteria and fungi growth. Growing. And here's my famous microscope that I've been using for years. Um, we'll look at it at 400 magnification. We'll just take one little droplet of each and put it on a slide and then put the slide underneath the microscope and then turn the computer on and then I'll show you what I can see and hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So here we have our nice clean slide and we're just going to take one drop and put it right in the middle there. We'll get rid of that air bubble. Let's clean that out for a second. There we go. And now we're just going to take a little lens cover here and then add that on top and place that underneath our microscope like so. Awesome. Now we're just going to open up our slide here. Slide it underneath like so. Lock it in place. Turn our light on here so we get a nice little good focus. Now we're going to do something very simple. We're going to just remove our viewing lens, put our camera in like so, and then we're going to plug that into our computer so we can see and I can show you what's going on. So here we are looking at the alfalfa meal underneath the microscope. Now, what you see here is just the start. This is at only 100 magnification and you can't see that much movement. So we're going to go and that's what I want to show you. We're going to go over to, give me one second here. We're going to go to 400 magnification and then we're going to zoom in or out. And here we go. You can see things moving around a little bit more. Let me point them out and hopefully you can see them on camera here. Now that dark circle or vision on the side here is not easy to see. So let's do this. Here, if I can hold it, it's very delicate. Just give me a second here. Now, what you see moving around, and hopefully you can see it, right there is a bacteria moving around, and there's another one over here, and then there's something large coming in on the bottom. Now, what that is, is, let's see what we can do here. That might be able to be a little bit better here. I can't zoom in, it's going underneath a piece of alfalfa here or so. Now what this is, now you can see the bacteria is smaller, and now you can see the other biology down here in the corner. And what that does, this is something that's gonna eat the bacteria also too, and then when it poops it out, then it's gonna give plant available nutrients. Now, also on top, let's see if I can move this up here. This is a sight to see. It's amazing how much stuff is on underneath the microscope. Oh, it's gonna, I'm gonna lose it. There we go. Let's move this down. I wanna capture this so I can show you here. Over here in the corner, you can see this large object moving here. This is very rare, it just happened to catch it. It's called a select. And also there's one here too. What those do, they'll eat the bacteria also. And then what it has to do is process it. And then after it eats the bacteria, it will poop it out and then we'll give plant available nutrients here. You can see smaller bacteria here, but you can see how much larger these other ones are. This is just amazing. This is what's on most organic products that have not been, uh, let's say, disturbed too much in nature and what's going on. You can definitely see all these little bacteria moving around 
and I'm surprised there is actually so many that after I rehydrated them and that just goes to show you that how nature is working so hard all the time now these bacteria will multiply every 20 seconds if they have a good food source um, temperature and a couple other things uh, just one bacteria will multiply into two bacteria every two seconds so say you had 100 bacteria now 20 seconds later you have 200 bacteria and that's why in nature all these other things that you'll eat the bacteria so they don't get out of control and those bacteria are the first things that go after organic food and the fungi will come later on now after searching around I want you to focus on this one little spot here and now I'll use this little hand on my computer mouse what this is is a fungi strand starting to grow already that was from the alfalfa now all the little things again you see moving around the screen that's bacteria the smallest little ones like where my hand is now and I'll point to it with the pencil like that right there now let's see if I can zoom out for a second and now we'll move this over so what you're seeing all that small movement is bacteria and again we have the fungi strand growing now I don't know what this is right here I haven't <laughs> learned everything yet there's all kinds of I think there's 400 different types of bacteria and 300 different kinds of fungi and I don't know if this is some type of protozoa or nematode that's in here right now but that is very interesting and it's very large so I know it's not a bacteria but it probably is something that will eat the bacteria or the fungi once it starts moving around in this uh, solution that I made so now I moved on to the alfalfa pellets now there's very lot less uh, material in here but I don't see any movement so and this is only at 100 magnification. Now we're going to go to 400 here. Give it a second to adjust. And here we go. Oh, we got some movement. A couple of bacteria, but not as much. But you can see here, now this is interesting. This piece that's floating around here again. Let's see if I can get a better close up for you this piece that's floating around yeah, it's very difficult to catch it all the time it's coming into it from the top of your screen that's some just fungi strands that have been growing inside just for the last let's say couple hours that's gotten rehydrated again too it's amazing how quickly they take off so here's another spot on the slide that I've been looking at on the alfalfa pellets. It seems like the alfalfa pellets, maybe through the processing or matter of time or heat or something else too, doesn't grow the bacteria as much or quick as quickly. But it is still there. There is some movement around. Now I just lost sight of them here. Now let's see if we can zoom in here. You can barely see them. But there's one moving around here that we got. There's some movement on the bottom of the screen or so. And, and over here in the corner. But that's just some nice bacteria. I don't see as much fungi either. But it's again, you just have to keep moving the slide around to adjust. So let's do that. I'm just going to move it to the side, the slide ever so slowly. And see if we can catch some more movement. Here's a little character going around very quickly or something like that. It keeps going in and out of focus. I apologize for that. It's not easy to, because they're moving up and down also too. Now, you can, again, you can see these two yellow dots at the bottom of the screen moving up nice and slow. And here's a super fast bacteria going by. Now, let's see. Very interesting. So, what we both see in both the pellets and the alfalfa meal is that we have a nice selection of bacteria and fungi that's actually included in the box it just has to rehydrate again and that's what it does like in the winter time uh, outside in the ground they're not moving around as much because it's cold they don't have the temp so they type you know they kind of almost let's say uh, hibernate or 
they'll even uh, become stagnant and just uh, dehydrate. I know the ground is frozen, but they can't move around as much. So that's just interesting how the biology is included with your package that you get. And that biology will actually have to decompose the alfalfa. And then again, it just goes through the whole process. And then by the time it's all decomposed, it's not just bacteria. Bacteria will decompose it, but it has to be eaten. The bacteria has to be eaten by something else again and that's called nematodes or protozoa and only then is it available as plant available nutrients and that's the same way as worm castings work inside the gut of a worm casting or inside the gut of a worm you have all this bacteria and fungi growing and also you have protozoa and nematodes which are larger and i'll show you a picture of that group just to give you a good idea Here's a nice little guideline I want to show you. Whenever you use alfalfa pellets or alfalfa meal, what I was trying to show you in a live shot on the uh, microscope is that you have your bacteria and fungi that has to, let's say, take the first step in eating this product first. And after they eat it and absorb it into their body, then, and only then, because it's not plant available nutrients right now, if these two eat it, you have to have the larger group over here come along, the nematodes and protozoas, and they have to eat the bacteria and fungi. And then they poop things out, and that's available to your plants, and only then. And that's the way nature has been working for uh, since the beginning of time. It's very interesting how it all works, and that's why I want to show you that you do have that bacteria, and a lot of people think it's not available in their soil or in their potting mix, but it's actually on the, most likely on the material that you add in already. I hope you found this video very interesting. We went over a lot of material today, but nature is fascinating. Every time I learn something, I will share it with you, but nature can take care of itself. We just have to understand it. And again, it's easy to understand. It's not difficult by any means. And it's probably the easiest thing you can do for your garden is just keep adding organic material. And what happens is all these bacteria and fungi and nematodes and protozoas will come along. That's why compost is also very good because they, it is a uh, method of growing what you see here and even more. So hope you enjoyed it again. Please like and share, and I'll see you again shortly with another video. Thanks. Bye.